Hello, I'm Dr. Graham. I would like to answer some of the more frequently asked questions by doctors and clinicians who prescribe and recommend posture pump disc hydrators. First, let me thank you for your unfailing support over the years. As of the beginning of 2010, you have applied patented posture pump technology to nearly two million patients. We can never know the precise number of people you have collectively restored to productive lives by breaking the debilitating cycle of addictive pain medication. But we are grateful and proud you have allowed us to participate. And special thanks to the many medical specialists who have reported avoiding last resort surgeries with the help of the posture pump. You have been tremendous and we truly appreciate your support. Your most frequent questions have been, what is the simplest way to explain the necessity for forward curves in the neck and back? And how can I quickly explain disc hydration? Let me tackle both of these together and hopefully cover your other questions in the process. Thank you very much. And so I think the best way to explain to your patients how important it is that they have forward curves in the neck and back is to show them a model of the spine. Something like this, or it could, can be a drawing. Uh, from the front, we want to explain to them that the spine should be relatively straight and in line. But from the side is when we see these big curves. Most people don't know what their spine looks like from the side. They just assume it should be straight. However, we see the big curve we have in the neck big curve we have in the lower back. And then we want to explain to them that the discs are in the front of the bones, not the back of the bones, but in the front. And if we lose these curves, weight now bears forward on the soft disc tissue, tissue in the front and the soft disc tissue in the lower spine as well. We don't like that to happen because, and this gets into the disc hydration question you ask, when we put pressure forward on the disc, we force the fluid out of the discs whether it's the neck or the back. For any prolonged period of time, if we have weight forward on these joints, the fluid will be forced away from the disc. And if it's left like that over a period of time, the disc will dry up and eventually the bones will change their form. Let's take an example. If we look at this individual here, this is a picture of the neck from the side. We notice that there is a nice curve, a forward curve in the spine. This is a picture of the neck from the side, only in this case, this individual has lost his normal curve in the neck, therefore putting pressure forward on the soft disc tissue, forcing the fluid out of the discs. Now, over a period of time, we can see that this individual, for example, 55 years old, a young man, but because he has lost the normal shape of the spine and forced the fluid out of the discs, the discs are thinning here and bone spurs are growing. And this is because the joints are dried up now. The spine is very stiff. The discs cannot get their fluid back. Now, we want to think of the disc as a sponge filled with fluid. Now, if I take this, and this one is filled with fluid, if I take this sponge, I'll put it in the, in the glass so you can see it. If I am to put pressure down on this sponge, as in this individual's neck, where the neck has buckled forward and collapsed upon these discs, what happens when I put pressure on the sponge, the fluid is forced out, as you can see. Now, if I take the pressure off, the fluid is drawn back in the sponge. So we want to keep the fluid in the sponge, not out of the sponge. And the same thing holds true with the disc in the neck. If we put pressure forward on the neck or the back over a period of time, we will force the fluid out of those discs. Those discs will dry up and this spine will age rapidly. So we've explained to the patient how forward pressure on the neck and the back forces the fluid out of the disc and if their spine remains in that forward position over a period of time and that could be looking down at a computer all day could be an accident where someone's neck has been whipped back and then forward really hard in a whiplash type injury could be falling off your bicycle when you're five years old a lot of things contribute to the loss of the normal shape and the loss of the normal posture here's an individual here who has a normal curve in the spine and we see here that the openings where the discs are, are wide. The bones are clean. We look at this particular individual. We've got an opening here, wide disc space, wide disc space. But all of a sudden, collapsing disc space, totally collapsed disc, collapsing disc space, bone spurs growing 
in the neck there. Again, tremendous amount of pressure over the years, forcing the fluid out, the discs dry up, and the spine literally starts to rot away. It becomes very stiff and painful. Now, what we like to point out here is that when you, we lose the fluid in, in, the, in the discs, it does take time to happen, and people don't feel it immediately. That's why it's very important for them to go to the doctor and, and be examined. This individual is only 55 years old. That's a young man by today's standards. Because he lost the shape of his neck and forced the fluid out of the disc, his spine now looks like a 75 to 80 year old person, maybe 90 years old. And lo and behold, we look over here, and here's an individual that went through his life with a normal curve in his spine. He's 75 years old. The discs are open. There's no bone spurs. He's got the neck of, say, a 20 year old, even though he's 75. So, like Dr. Harry Farfan, the famous medical doctor who's written textbooks, has said, aging and degenerative changes are not synonymous. Of course, what he means by that is, here's a person only 55, spine is ser seriously damaged. This person is 75, again, the spine looks like a 20-year-old. So it's not the age of the individual, it's the shape of the spine that determines its longevity and function. So the next step in explaining how important it's going to be for the patients to uh, restore the posture in their neck and back and also to hydrate their discs is to, uh, I think, to show them uh, maybe one of the x-rays you may have of someone before and after they use the posture pump. If you don't have them, they can certainly go on our website and, um, and you can go on our website. You can even print out uh, some of these examples. And here's one for you right now. Here's an individual who was x-rayed in a seated position. You can see that before he used the posture pump, he has lost all of his curve. In fact, he's not only went to zero, he's negative 13 degrees. And we notice that their neck, like the chart before, has lost the curve. In other words, the neck is going back. Here's a picture of the same person after only one 20 minute treatment with this posture pump cervical device. Notice the disc here, very thin. And notice it here, it's wide open. It's 100% wider. It's double in thickness now after one treatment. Now he has a curve in his neck and look at that compressed disc. Look how wide it is now. It's no longer compressed to this point. It's twice as wide now. So we've got from negative 13 degree, we've got a plus 22 degree curve in the neck. That's a 35 degree change in one treatment for 20 minutes. The posture pump machine works very well and if you can explain it to the patient how important it is to have the fluid back in the disc, you'll have great patient compliance because they like to use it. So here's another example that you can print off from our website at posturepump.com. Again, another cervical x-ray from the side. And you can see here again an individual who, rather than have a full nice curve in the neck where the weight is off the disc, they have compression again down on the disc. And you can see the yellow arrow, it's depicting how close together these joints are. The yellow line is showing you that it started off with a curve, and then all of a sudden the spine buckled back. And that's known as a lordotic S-curve. Obviously patients don't need to know that information, but they, they can understand, again, the clamping down of the disc, the trapping of that disc fluid, and forcing it out. Now here's, again, after one posture pump treatment, one 20-minute treatment at 8 PSI, and look at what's happened. We've got a curve in the neck now. It's not buckled back in the middle. We've got a curve, and look at the difference in disc space here and here. See how it's closed down here, and it's spread wide open? So the beauty of being able to print these x-rays off on our website and show them to your patient is that they can actually see the difference when a disc has been compressed, and after only one treatment, how it can be decompressed with the posture pump disc hydrator. They'll be more apt to use it at home, They'll be more apt to follow your recommendations, and they will get the results that you want them to have. In 2006, the famous neurosurgeon, Dr. Norman Sheely, uh, who is a PhD, and I believe he's written 20 or 30 books, very nice gentleman, uh, agreed to do some research for us 
uh, regarding the posture pump disc hydrator. And the first study he did in 2006 uh, depicted this type of situation over and over in the 34 patients that he performed MRIs on. In this study, he performed an MRI before treatment with the posture pump disc hydrator and then an MRI in the same patient immediately after the treatment. This particular study, uh, the patient underwent one 20-minute session using the posture pump disc hydrator. And he found out something very interesting, something that we hadn't proven before. Take a look again here at the discs. Again, this person is facing that direction. Cervical, spine, you see the discs here. Notice what he depicted here as bulges. After one 20-minute treatment, look at the spine now. He found that by him inflating the spine to 8 PSI for 20 minutes, he was able to draw the bulging tissue away from the spinal cord and back into the disc proper. In fact, out of the four bulges, this one treatment was able to dispense with three of them. But just, just a quick look at this. This is very impressive to patients that have disc bulges. We see them here, and after one treatment, almost all of them are gone. Again, during the 2006 study performed by the neurosurgeon, Dr. Norman Sheely, uh, we had a, uh, some dramatic results. Uh, where he imaged individuals while they were on the posture pump disc hydrator while in the MRI machine and this is an example of what he found time and time again. Here's an individual who has lost, again, lost the normal shape in the cervical spine. Spine is buckled back. Again, what happens there? We know that there's compression on the disc and fluid is forced out. In this case, we can see fluid being forced back towards the spinal cord. You can see the disc bulges here, 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 and here. While they were on the posture pump disc hydrator, this is what the image showed. Instead of a backwards neck or a buckled neck, we had a curve in the neck now, which is what we want. And the disc spaces are wide open, 21%, 33%, and 20% respectively. The disc bulges now were drawn back into the disc proper and away from the spinal cord. These blow-ups here are of the key areas. This is before the treatment. You can see the disc bulges here. And this is during treatment. The disc bulges are drawn in, and the disc spaces are wide open, while it simultaneously a curve has been placed into the spine. The beauty of the posture pump disc hydrator, it pulls the bulges back towards the, the nucleus propulsus, or the center of the disc, it puts the curve back in the spine and heightens the thickness of the disc.